is there a healthy way to be at any point when you were single and sex workers and whatever i don't what i don't know what you were up to exactly but was it ever could it be healthy is there a healthy way to want to have sex once a day in a potentially different way you know, I think it is if both people are cool with it. Like, yeah. um, well, at sex workers, you would assume that they're cool with it, right? Or do, have you? Do you have a different opinion? I've always it? had good experiences with sex workers, but I fall in love quickly. Like, I've always really liked them, and like, I I, I find them uh, fascinating and love and love talking to them and spending time with them. Um, but I couldn't in, in the marriage. I couldn't go out and do that um, because then I won't come back. Like, I I know I haven't cheated. Like if I, if I watch porn sometimes, or I want to jerk off. I'll look at, at Twitter. There's a million videos, but I haven't gone into that where I always went, which was to cheat because I can't come back from that. Yeah. So I always know that no matter how fucked up I think, I have not done that with my wife. With everyone else, I did it. Um, I've cheated. But even if you're not cheating, let's say you're single. Yeah. You're not committed oh, right, to right, right, emotionally. Yeah. Do you think that there's a healthy way to do? Even or to to just a different sex worker every night. And is and even like the fascination part where you're connecting with them, like I don't. The, uh, you could convince me that that's as healthy as anything. If if you're doing it every, chances are any. If I'm doing anything every day that I really don't need to do, chances are it's feeding some sort of addiction. So I guess by default it can't be healthy. Right. I guess it. Okay. Let's say you your body. You have the kind of body that likes to have one orgasm a day, yeah. give or take. What if you did it with a sex worker? Yeah, I mean, as long as you know, like, it, I, I would always get it, it, find the same person and see them over and over and over. Mm -hmm. um, new people, sure, but you know, I always like seeing the same person over and over. But I guess that could be healthy um, as long as there's two people doing what they want to do. Like right. with sex work, the the thing that's scary is how do I know? And I never thought of this growing up. I didn't know it. And then as you get older, you go, how do I know she wants to do this? How do I know she's cool with this? And then it starts to really bother you. So you just see people whose story you know. Um, and I know people will go, you never know people's story. Yeah, you do sometimes. If you know yeah. someone for five, six years, you have a pretty good understanding of their situation in their life. Um, so as time went on, it narrowed down to a very, very smaller group of people who I knew. Um, and it just became easier that way. We knew each other. I was comfortable with them. I knew they were comfortable with me. Um, but a different sex worker every day, I don't think I've ever done that. I've done it in addictive mode. I've done three in a day when I was in a manic state. But uh, and what do you? What's the point of that? Meaning, when you say you're literally you had a you were having a manic episode and it was just you you wanted that. It's fighting the urge. It's tremendous depression or self hatred, and you're just trying to keep the high going. It's addiction, and it's like you know. When, I remember when Nikki and I broke up at one point. I was actually here in L.A. and I saw three three uh, and they were all uh, sex workers I had known for years. But I saw one, and then me and her were fighting the phone. I ran over to someone else's apartment. And I came back and I did the. It was just anything to keep me from crashing and then just being alone. Like a lot of it is you just don't want to be alone. You just right. don't want to come down and say like, this is my life. It's the thing about sexual energy. It's all fantasy. Yeah. The feeling is not normal. You're literally giving yourself more dopamine. So it is a bit of like a dream state. Yeah. So why it's like alcohol and then the, or alcohol or what any sure. addiction. It's just, you kind of know what you're going to get and it's predictable. Yeah, and I was bent on, I mean, it was real, like I had zero regard for myself. Like people know that like sexual behavior is selfish or hey, you're just thinking to yourself, I'm, I'm not even thinking about myself. I don't give a fuck about myself. Like I'm not protecting myself. I put myself in right, bad situations. Right, there's like the self is not anywhere near. It's yes, I hate my, I'm trying to avoid myself. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing this because I think I'm terrific. Yeah, and you're uh, not getting, you're not getting much from, you're not getting like status. You're not getting like, see this, see how sexy I am. Yeah. It's paying just, people. It's yeah, it is crazy. I mean, uh, but again, a lot of a but, lot of but it, that thing you said about doing things for the right reason because I've 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 tried to write jokes about it and I never they're never good enough. But if like let's say strippers are all they go they're all molested they're all so they're all there for the wrong reason. I don't know many comics that are there for the right reason. Right. <laughs> What's the tell me the difference? Yeah, and if you if you, I always look at it like. When, you know, people can't have, you can't say, hey, people should have their own agency if they, people want to throw those words around. And yet when someone makes decisions they don't like, they're like, oh, they're being victimized. Yeah. I don't know the difference sometimes. Um, 
and I would like to know the difference because that really fucked with me after a while. I'm like, I can't do this if I don't know the difference because I just don't want to contribute to somebody else's demise. Yeah, you yeah you, exactly. It's like go to a strip club. It's it's like uh, supporting sex trafficking on the one hand, and then on the other hand, it's like I don't know. We all got to work. That's just the best way they could find to make money and or and even, or take the sexual attention part. We're getting perverse attention on st- perverse attention. It's yeah. not. It's not maternal or it's not from our family and it's not from our spouse or partner. So is that bad attention? Yeah, I never know. Like I, strip clubs I actually never really liked, but just because it was so, you, you know, you just, I knew where it was going to go nowhere. Like even in my delusion, I knew that was, I mean, there's too many beautiful women. There's too many guys with money. Like I yeah. don't stand a chance here. If I was, if I was, you know, if you're David Lee Roth, fine. But um, I never liked strip clubs for that reason. Uh, but I've dated a few strippers, and uh, you know, I mean, they were like no different than anybody else. They were making money. They were making a lot of money. Um, and the women I've known were fine doing it. Um, yeah, well, that's the thing. But that's the, what you're saying. Like cr- critics would say, like no one's fine doing it. But that's also okay. it, it, that. That's critics, and some critics are, would be. There are people that don't want to do it. Sure, and they're right. But to say that no one's enjoying it or no one wants to do sex work is basically saying that if they make a moral decision that I find objectionable, then it can't be legitimate. It, there, it couldn't possibly. Yeah. And how bad did the sex addiction, was there a bottom of the sex addiction or was there? You know, you, when you're using sex, like you're using any other drug, when you're using it, and it's not just with other people. I mean, most of my stuff was with pornography and these hours of edging and jerking off and numbing yourself. I mean, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Uh, the bottom is basically that you're just languishing in this place where there's no connection with people. Uh, there's no, it's always, like I realize, I, it's funny, there, there's an example, like what sex addiction is this. Dr. Drew had a show. He did all the alcohol shows, but yeah. he's talking about sex addiction. And there was a drummer, and I don't remember what band he was from, but he said that he was in this rehab and he, and he for sex, and he goes, you know, the last time I spoke to my mother, I rushed her off the phone so I could masturbate, and she died. And that was the last conversation he ever had with his mother. But he didn't know, but he just wanted to get back yeah. to jerking off. And I thought that's what sex addiction is. That's what it is. It's not always the things you read about or that you hear about on the news or guys getting busted with prostitutes or all of these. It's it's the way that you, you shortchange people in your life, the moments you lose with people that you never realize, like the, the hours and the years you waste with people who don't care about you, who you don't care about, uh, the risk you put your partner at you know this it is weird that that to me summed up what what addiction is though it's like you you rush your mother off the phone so you can just right. get back to jerking your off your priority is the last just time getting ever... to that weird yeah state yeah instead yeah. of just like a good having a nice conversation with your mother yeah. and i thought i've never stopped thinking about that weird little moment uh and i've gone to meetings for sex addiction um which helped tremendously i mean i, I still have a sponsor um, and he always says, go make memories with your wife. Go make memories with Nikki. Like, and I think about that a lot. Like, I love looking back at our old photos and videos. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, this is what I'm doing. I'm making memories with my wife. This is better than anything sexual I'm going to do. But I still fall into the porn sometimes. Do you have a, like, a limit? Like, do you have a rules? Do you have rules for yourself? No, because again, I know I'm just going to, I'm looking at different things and then one will hit me. It's like just, you know what I mean? That little search you do on porn, all of a sudden you find the one and you lock in. It, 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 it's, it's, yeah. it's in the atmosphere. It's in the air. Just lo- it's like a joke. You, you, you're searching and it, you, you're reaching for it without looking. And then there it is and you have it. And that's the wording. That's how it is with porn. You, you, I'm looking through this one and that one and that way. I look at a lot of escort websites uh, in England of girls I'm never going to see. That's um, so funny. I mean, yeah. it's so funny that like, Somehow you were like, let's check England. I do, yeah. And there's some great, uh, <laughs> great uh, <laughs> trans sex workers in England. But I, I just look and I'm never going to go and do it. It also is kind of safer because I know they're not people right. who I can access. Yeah. I can just look at the pictures and the things they write. And You're relying on your cheapness to kick in and be like, well, I'm not flying. Exactly. Anywhere. How many miles do I have on America? <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah. Did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people first of all go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh watch more clips this is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in Although i'm not really used to the green screen